In this video, we're going to look at setting up a pest-initiated PRA. This type is focused on a single pest that may have multiple pathways of entry. I am on the PRA tool homepage, looking at my personal view, which is highlighted in blue. Before starting a new PRA, it is important to consider whether you want to share the editing with others. If that is the case, you need to set it up in a team view instead. I already have some pest PRAs in my personal view. And for this demonstration, I'm going to recreate the first example to show you how to set it up. This PRA is for assessing the risk of red palm weevil to garner. So the first thing I'm going to do is start a new PRA by pest. The background and scope of the PRA are entered on the initiation page. The first thing I'm going to do is to enter the name of the pest. I start typing it and it looks up the index of pest data sheets in the CPC. So I'm going to select the red palm weevil and check that the scientific name is what I'm expecting. Having done that, a button appears which provides the link to the data sheet. And I can click on that and view the data sheet when I'm working on the PRAs. The mandatory fields in the initiation page are marked with an asterisk. So the next thing is to decide whether this is a demo or test PRA or a live PRA. In this case, I'm going to select, yes, it's a demo PRA. And then I'm going to enter the country at risk. So that is Ghana. And I need to add a title. So I'm going to create one here, risk of red palm evil to Ghana. I can come back and edit that later. There are some calendars here where you can enter the start date and the due date if you want to. And these help you to sort the PRAs in your PRA list on the home page. Then there are some fields to complete for the background and you need to really complete these as fully as possible. So the PRA area may be the country as a whole or you might be deciding that it needs to be a part of a country. And you may have some details about the reason behind the request for the PRA. There's also a drop down here, which provides a simple sort of list for you to select for future reference. So you can select the reason for the PRA that is most appropriate. In this case, I'm going to select that the pest has been identified through horizon scanning. It is important to consider whether previous PRAs exist for this pest already, because that would provide valuable information. So if you are aware of existing PRAs for either the PRA area, if you're reviewing the status of an existing quarantine pest or a pest that was risk assessed some time ago, or if you know of PRAs that exist for other regions, then you can enter that detail here. So I'm going to say that I know that there's a, a PRA for Tunisia that was already conducted, and I might have the link to add into this text box here. If I don't have a link to an online resource, I would want to add the full details of the reference in the references list. And this starts to compile the reference list for the PRA report. Obviously, I would add full details here. Having completed this as fully as possible, I'll select next to move on to the next page. And this shows you that the PRA tool is arranged around four tabs that relate to the PRA process. So there's categorization, risk assessment, risk management, and then there's a PRA summary. And you can move around the PRA tool in any order but a workflow is provided to do this logically. So the next stage is categorization. And here, this is where some basic information about the pest is entered, and also a rapid assessment of the pest potential for establishment and impact to determine whether the pest potentially requires phytosanitary measures and justifies a more detailed risk assessment. 
You can see here that the access to the data sheet is provided. So I'm going to click on that and read up a bit more about the pest. And you'll see that the data sheet sections are available to me here. I can go back to my PRA by clicking on the browser tab. Some of these sections have buttons to import data directly from the CPC in a concise format. So in this case, I've imported the names and the taxonomic position. This is just text, so you can edit it or delete it if you want to. It's just provided as a help to start the PRA off. The next section to complete is the presence or absence from the PRA area. You might have some historical information that's relevant, so you could include that here. And then there's the option to select the regulatory status of the pest if that already exists. So if it's already been recorded officially as a quarantine pest for Ghana. Here, there's an option to add the regulatory statuses of the pest in other countries. And that can be a very useful indicator of whether the pest has generally been decided to be an invasive species. So this section on distribution also has a button to import that data from the CPC. And you'll see that provides a compact format and gives you the date when that data was pulled in. Other sections may not have such obvious imports, and so you would need to do a bit more research to make that content relevant to your particular PRA. And then the final part is looking at a very rapid assessment of the risk for establishment and impact in order to determine whether the full risk assessment is justified. So selecting yes here will take you forwards to the risk assessment. And you should select yes if you haven't got enough information at this stage to decide that the pest is not going to meet the criteria of quarantine pest status. So after categorization, we go into the detailed risk assessment and the steps here are broken down into four tabs, probability of entry, probability of establishment, probability of spread and the potential consequences. These are closely related to the structure of the PRA in ISPM 11. So if we look at the probability of entry first, you'll see that there's a button here to add a pathway. And this is where we look at adding all potential pathways of entry for this pest. So a list of common pathways is presented to select from. You can add a little bit more detail. So in this case, I'm going to select plants for planting, but you can make this a bit more specific where you could say palm planting material. And then a form is presented with a checklist of questions to consider when you're deciding on the risk of entry by that pathway. And so there are some questions, some factors to consider which may structure your research and your conclusions. And each question is followed by a text box for you to enter the evidence that you've gathered to answer that question. So in this case, what is the probability of the pest being associated with the pathway at origin? So here you might be considering where palm planting material is sourced from and the prevalence of the pest in those growing regions. Once you've completed this as fully as possible, and added references to the reference section of the PRA. You can then access the Add Rating drop down menu to select a rating for this particular question and also a confidence level. And you'll see that you can work through the PRA. There's no required order. You can just complete each section when you have information available.
At the bottom of this form, there's a summary rating and confidence level for the overall probability of entry by this pathway. And you also have the option to select whether you consider it to be a major or a minor pathway. And to conclude this stage with, does this pathway require management measures? So if the pest were to establish spread and cause impact, would this pathway require management? So you can select that. And that updates the probability of entry page. It brings through the pathway you've selected and the summary rating and confidence level. And you can always go back and edit that pathway by clicking on the edit button when you have more information to add, perhaps at a later session. You would then add more pathways if they were relevant and work through the assessment of each in turn. And you are asked to conclude whether phytosanitary measures are required for each pathway you've assessed. If the answer is no for some of those pathways, then they will not be considered further in this PRA. Now, the other thing to add just on this page is that the PRA tool does provide an option to export the risk assessments to be edited offline in Word. And I just want to show you that the button to do that is here and it's provided on this page so that you have the option to add the potential pathways so that the template sections are created for each pathway before you produce the export. So I'm going to have a look at the next step of the risk assessment, the probability of establishment. And you'll see there's a similar format with a set of questions. You know, in this case, talks about suitable host vectors, other elements that would affect its likelihood of establishment, and also a summary page here. And at this point, I'm going to stop this PRA and go back to the home page and show you the example that already has a bit more content in it so that you can see how the risk assessment is concluded. So this shows you the initiation and the categorization that has a bit more information in it. And then we go on to the risk assessment and we can click through to the tab, which is the risk assessment summary page. So here we can see that there's a table which brings forward the pathways that have been assessed and also the other steps of the risk assessment with their ratings and confidence levels. So that you can then determine the overall likelihood that this pest could enter and cause some damage, in which case it would require phytosanitary measures. So that's the conclusion of the risk assessment. Having concluded the risk assessment, risk management is then presented as another page with each of the relevant pathways brought forward. Although the text boxes appear small here and headings are not provided, there is no limit to the content and subheadings that can be added into these text boxes and they look more expanded in the PRA report. It may be useful to refer to the options used in the pathway initiated PRA workflow for pre-border headings relating to the plant commodities because that just gives you a, a sort of structure. But post-border phytosanitary measures can be selected in this section with details added to the text boxes underneath them. So the conclusion of risk management may select the most appropriate measures or a priority for the risk management and a way forward. So having concluded the risk management, the PRA tool then takes you through to a summary page where the risk assessments, including the pathways and the risk management measures have been selected. 
and text boxes are provided to conclude the PRA, which includes a summary for the phytosanitary measures that have been selected. There's also a specific place for next steps associated with this PRA. So in this case, the next step would be to send it out for peer review and also to add the contact details for the PRA report. The PRA can be finalized by clicking change PRA status to complete to yes. You can still go back and edit it again if you want to, but it just shows as a completed PRA in your PRA list on the home page. And from here, having entered lots of data, you can download the report directly into Word at the bottom of this page. But I just want to show you that the PRA report is available from any of the sections to be accessed at any time with the data as complete as it is at the point you create the report. Initially, it shows you a view in HTML, which can be quite useful just for reading through and checking how it's coming along. Perhaps it might be the first time you've looked at it if it's a team view of a PRA that your colleagues have entered the data for. But then you can also download the report into a Word document for sharing and editing offline. So I'm just going to open this. And you'll see actually I've opened it with navigation view on because this is actually quite handy to navigate through the document. You'll see that the different sections are shown here. So the Word document contains all of the relevant information that you've put into the PRA tool. So I'm just going to stop sharing that. And I think I've shown most of the features of the PEST initiated PRA pathway, but there is further help on the help page with a user guide that provides a bit more detail on the steps that I've just shown here.